Hi. Today we're going to talk about security uh, in the context of using AngularJS uh, on top of Laravel 4. And this is a continuation of uh, the series of screencasts that I've been doing on AngularJS. If uh, you read the comments in the previous screencast, which covered end-to-end, -end, uh, you'll know that there was a number of viewers that requested a follow-up on how we could actually make our authentication service and this um, authentication scheme using Angular and a single page app work uh, so that it was secure. And so that's what this screencast is going to focus on. So when we talk about security uh, in the context of web applications, I think there's just a couple of things I want to make a note of before we dive into the code. And the first one is that security is hard. Uh, there are no silver bullets when it comes to implementing security to be able to cover all of the edge cases uh, in a web application. There's new vulnerabilities discovered every day it's very hard to stay on top of things. Um, but we can do some common sense things uh, that you know a lot of other web application frameworks do uh, and even provide. You'll see some of the things that Laravel provides under the hood for us uh, to be able to do this. And uh, that's kind of what we're going to cover today. We're basically going to look at three sort of common sense things that you can do. Uh, and I'll just mention them here at a high level. We're going to talk about um, serving your application uh, on, on the server side, so whether you're using Apache or Nginx as your front end for your application, uh, using transport layer security, uh, TLS or secure sockets layer. Um, TLS is the newer uh, protocol that's standardizing that. Basically serving your application over HTTPS uh, and why that's important. Uh, we're not going to dig into that too much. We're going to look at um, sanitizing your input and escaping your output. Uh, in this case, the login form is input only. We're not actually displaying any of that information. But if we were going to display it uh, on the screen, we would want to sanitize both of those cases. And we'll take a look at how Angular can help us do that. And then just protecting against injections. Uh, you know, We talk about MySQL injections or SQL injections, uh, preventing people from monkeying with your database. Laravel kind of gives us stuff out of the box to do that. But then there's also wanting to prevent script injections uh, and from third parties from injecting things into our page to uh, gain access to information that users um, probably don't want them to have access to. So let's look, for example, uh, when I go to twitter.com, you can see that uh, the green lock icon is up here in Chrome, and I can see that I've got identity verified and some information about the connection. You can see that it's been um, encrypted over TLS 1.0, that's that transport layer security. So t the Twitter web application uh, is encrypting all of the information that I send back and forth between it. And that's basically uh, what you want to do. And there's ways that you can configure Apache and Nginx to do that. They're a bit beyond the scope of this. I basically just wanted to mention it. Uh, and the reason I wanted to mention it is because uh, there was an article posted a couple of uh, days ago um, by Troy Hunt talking about serving your static assets over HTTPS uh, um, and how you know there's a lot of companies that have authentication forms that are served over HTTP uh, and they post over HTTPS when they submit to the server, but the how that's not secure enough. And so uh, that's as far as I want to talk in this screencast about the server-side configuration, but uh, you should definitely check out this video from Troy. He's got a really good example of why you not only need to post your authentication credentials over HTTPS, but you also need to serve your login form over HTTPS. So you can check that out. All right. So uh, that covers the server side. Let's talk about um, preventing injections and sort of the first piece uh, of our app that we're going to modify. So I'm going to start up our app again. And if you remember, we are using uh, Laravel's artisan command. So let's do that. And I can reload here. And if you remember, uh, we had the ability to log in. And we can see the home page. Another uh, modification that I've made to this code is basically to add, oh, that's the wrong sublime window. Um, I've added a new route called uh, slash books. And I've also added um, the ability to view that. So if we take a look at app.js, take a look at our route provider, you can see that there's a new route here, uh, which says, I'm going to grab the books. It's got its own template. Uh, I've got a controller. And then I've got that resolve property I talked about briefly at the end of the previous uh, screencast. And basically what that means is Angular is going to attempt to resolve this uh, function and assign it to the value books in the controller uh, before the template renders. So let's take a look at that. 
you can see right here. I'm going to repeat with ng repeat book and books. And I want to grab the title and the author, which is what you can see in the browser if I go to books. And so the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this route uh, can only be, this resource can only be accessed by somebody who's actually authenticated. Uh, so let's take a look at what we're going to do there. So using Laravel, let's just go and check out routes here. And the thing that we want to do is do an auth check. Uh, and we want to filter um, this route. And we can do that here by saying, uh, before you can access this route, you need to do the auth filter. And then we still have our closure. And I believe I just need another one of those to close it out. And so now if I reload at books, uh, I've already logged in, so everything's OK. But if I log out and try to access books, uh, you can see that I get a 500 error. And I'm not authenticated. Um, that 500 error isn't really what we want to, uh, to have happen. If you remember in the previous screencast, we created um, our logs user out logs out user on 401. And so we would want any of our responses from uh, Laravel to issue a 401 so that uh, our app would understand that the user was logged out. So let's do that really quick. And the way that you can do that in Laravel is with filters. And you can see that uh, there's already an auth filter, which I'm using in that route. I'm saying uh, before you have access, you need to run this filter, which is called auth. Uh, but it doesn't quite work the way that we want. Laravel has the concept of a guest. Um, and we don't really want uh, to have any guests in our application. So let's just modify this uh, a little bit. Um, you can check if the user's logged in using auth check. And so we're just going to check if they're logged in. And if they're not, uh, we're going to return uh, a JSON response uh, using our flash thing that we built before. Uh, we'll say please log in. And the HTTP status code that we want is unauthorized 401. So if we do that, uh, then that will work in conjunction with uh, what we've got here to show our message. So now you can see I got 401 unauthorized. Uh, we can take a look at the content of that, just that flash, me flash message, and you can see that we got the message that says please log in. So that's one way that you can secure your uh, routes. Um, but that still doesn't get us to the place where uh, you know we want to be talking about how to secure the login form. And if you're using a, a server-side templating framework, like if you're using ERB in Rails, for example, and you're using form helpers, basically things that uh, can generate markup for you so that you can post uh, form fields back to the server, you'll know that one of the pieces that um, those applications support is injecting called something, something called a CRS, CSRF token. And a CSRF token, basically uh, CSRF stands for cross-site uh, request forgery. And that token basically exists so that some third party can't take uh, the values that I'm submitting here, which they shouldn't be able to access anyway if I'm serving it over HTTPS or SSL, uh, and spoof my session basically to log in from a third party location and, and get information. Um, and Laravel provides a CSRF token that you can inject into your templates, but we're not using a Laravel template. Uh, we're using just plain old HTML. So what we're going to do now is look at how we can uh, inject that CSRF token and make Angular aware of it so that it can submit that data uh, along with um, its request to the auth. So let's add another filter. Uh, actually, I think we can take a look at the default CSRF one. Yeah, here it is down here. So you can see that uh, if we wanted to have that CSRF filter run on our route, which we're going to add to the authentication, the login route, Basically, the default one checks if the value of the token in the session doesn't equal the value of this input token, the CSRF token. Uh, it's just going to throw an exception. And again, that's not exactly what we want to do. We want to do something a little bit different. So let's add another one. And what we're going to do is create one called CSRF underscore JSON because we're going to be extracting uh, the token from our JSON payload that the authentication service sends. And you'll see how this works in a second. Uh, but basically, we want a similar piece of logic. So we can say, um, if the session token is not equal to the input, uh, and we're going to grab it from JSON and be explicit about the key that we want, so let's do that, then uh, we want to um, throw that same exception. So I'm just going to grab this line, 
So that's our filter. And again, we're going to go to routes and we want to add that to our login uh, route. So let's do that here. Uh, and this syntax changes just a little bit. Uh, we want to do array again with four CSRF JSON. And then instead of this syntax, we can just say uh, uses as part of our associative array to continue that um, format where we're using the control, the controller name, the at symbol, and separated by the login. And so this is basically going to configure Laravel uh, to say, hey, uh, when the user logs in, uh, we want you to check. Oh, I got a syntax error here. Right, and I always forget to add my. Uh, extra brackets. Uh, Laravel is basically going to check and say, uh, if that CRF, CSRF token does not exist, then we're not going to let you in. And you can see we got a 500. And you can see that that exception was thrown. So uh, let's modify our uh, Angular service. Uh, where are we here? Authentication service. And let's make it aware of the token. And we'll see how we can do that. Alrighty. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we need to make our template aware of that token somehow. And if you've used Rails or you've used Laravel with the Blade templating engine, uh, you know that you can do that by just injecting it uh, into your top level page. And Rails, for example, would uh, inject a, a meta attribute. And I think it gives it a name of CSRF token. And then uh, it would stick a value in here. And if you're in ERB, it would jam it in like this. Uh, and you can do the same thing in Laravel. It supports injecting uh, a value here. So the way you do that is using uh, PHP echo CSRF underscore token. So let's reload the page and take a look here at the head. And we can see that we have our CSRF token. Uh, another note, it's important that uh, in order to make sure that your token is unique to your application, you need to generate what's called uh, a security key. So you can see right now here, I've got an encryption key set uh, as this value. And so the way that you can generate that is using Artisan. So if you take a look at PHP Artisan, you can see uh, that there's this key generate command that you can use. So you can do PHP Artisan key generate, uh, and then it generates you a new key. So um, you only have to do that once when you're configuring your application. And by default, Laravel doesn't include a key for you. Uh, and I've modified the code in the, the repo on GitHub to reset it to the default so that one of the things you'll be forced to do is generate a security key. Uh, and what Laravel does is it uses that security key uh, in conjunction with uh, the session to hash and give you a unique value, unique value for the CSRF token. Uh, so that works, but that's basically driving the CSRF token into um, just uh, the markup. That doesn't do anything to make Angular aware of uh, that CSRF token and our authentication service. So how do we actually make Angular aware of that stuff? Well, we can do it a couple of different ways. Uh, one is using a directive called ng-init. And that would provide this value. Um, so if I say CSRF token equals, and then we do that. That would provide this value as the variable CSRF token on the scope. Uh, and because uh, this exists inside of our ng app directive, it's going to put it on the root scope CSRF token. And so now if we go to our th authentication service, or even let's just go to our uh, login controller and do that little trick where we assign the scope on window and reload. And now if I take a look at the scope, you can see that the CSRF token is there. Um, we'll take a look a little bit later at why that might not be the best way to inject the value. Um, but it is, you know, one of the common questions is, well, how do I inject server side values into Angular? Uh, and using ng init uh, is definitely one of the ways to do it. Just remember that the value that you assign to this variable will exist uh, in the scope that it was created in. And we're, since we're doing it in ng app, it's on the root scope. 
So now we need to modify our uh, login service so that it actually passes that value along. And now that we have it on the scope, uh, it's pretty easy to do that. So we can just look at this. We can say, hey, authentication service, uh, your credentials are going to include something called CSRF token. And we want to grab it from the scope dot CSRF token. And now if we reload and we type in our credentials, you can see that everything worked. Let's just inspect that request. And you can see that in the headers, the request payload, we've got that token. And so now that satisfies Laravel's route requirement that says, hey, before you can access auth, make sure that there's a CSRF token. And so that is basically going to protect, protect um, in conjunction with serving our app over SSL uh, from cross-site request forgery. Uh, it's going to, if somebody else tried to create a request, uh, they would need that token. And we can basically guarantee that because this token is only served up when the user visits our page, that this request is coming from our application uh, and not some third party source. Uh, so that's a good way um, to, to sort of the first line of defense when you're securing a login form and to prevent somebody from spoofing a request from outside. And so I talked a little bit about why it might not be appropriate to uh, inject that token inside of single page here with ng in it. So let's take a look at another alternative for doing that. And maybe we don't want this in the markup. So I'm just going to whack that line. And let's add another script block here uh, using a little bit more elegant method um, called angular.constant. So we're going to grab our app and we're going to assign a constant. Uh, and the value is going to be CSRF token. And we're going to make it uh, just a simple object literal. And the key is going to be CSRF token. And the value is still going to be that output of PHP um, echo CSRF token. And what this is going to do is it's going to make it available as a constant. And the nice thing about constants is that they are injectable dependencies. Uh, so you can inject them into your controllers and things like that. Uh, and it, it's a little bit nicer to have that as an explicit dependency, uh, because now instead of um, you know making this a concern at the controller level, this really should be a concern of the authentication service. So let's uh, take this guy out of here. Um, let's go to our authentication service which is right here. Let's inject our constant. And let's modify our login function so that uh, we get that extra information that we want. Um, and so now what we want to do is we want to uh, extend those credentials uh, inside of this login function. Um, with the value of that constant, which is CSRF token. Uh, and that uh, basically you know, removes the responsibility of uh, that authentication concern from the controller, because it really shouldn't be there. All the controller is concerned with, hey, do you have uh, email and password? And I just want to pass that along. And our authentication service can be concerned with uh, the, the notion that there's this token that I need to pass along, and it's an app level concern. So let's take a look at if that works. I'm just going to log out. Log in again, and you can see it worked. We still get our token passed along as part of the request payload, uh, and now that auth stuff is all working nicely. So I talked about uh, you know serving your app over SSL, serving your static assets, so serving your login form over SSL as well as posting over SSL. Uh, that's you know critical here. Um, protecting against third-party injections using the CSRF token. There's one more piece that uh, doesn't really apply so much because we're not using um, this input to display anywhere on the screen. But I figured this would be a good enough screencast to talk about uh, Angular's sanitize uh, module. And the way that you uh, add sanitize, let's just take a look at the documentation. So you can see here that there's a module called ng sanitize. And what it's used for is to uh, sanitize your input. So when the user types their username and password into that field, uh, we want to sanitize that so that we can get rid of any you know, script elements. Maybe they wanted to type admin at example.org and then have a script and then try to alert something. 
and we don't really want those to go through. Um, so we want, uh, the reason we don't want those to go through is because if we're not escaping that input and we're using the value that the user puts in here, for example, if this was a registration form to display on the screen, uh, we wouldn't want them to uh, be able to inject scripts and then modify our page when we're displaying that information later. Uh, you know, the example would be that that alert would show up if we were displaying their, their email address later. Uh, so let's take a look at, at how we can do that. Um, this gets into sort of the modularity of Angular, and one of the interesting things about that sanitized service is it actually exists in a separate uh, JS file. And if you go to the root level of the Angular page, and we go to download and unstable and previous versions, you can see all of the different versions here. There, there was a new release just recently, just a couple days ago, 115. So let's take a look in 115. And you can see that aside from Angular as sort of the root level, there's a bunch of these other modules, which you should definitely check out and familiarize yourself well with. Uh, but the sanitized one is the one we're going to use. So there is a separate JS file, and we need to actually add that. So I'm going to go grab that code, and I'm going to add uh, that dependency here. Uh, so we want to add the sanitize module after Angular. And let's go to our public folder. This is where you might want to use something like Bower to manage these dependencies, which I'm going to look at in a, a little later screencast. Uh, sanitize. Let's plug that in. There we go. Uh, so that just makes, makes the module level available. So we have our ng sanitize module available, but we actually need to inject it into um, the Angular app so that we can uh, use it. And so to do that, we just basically add uh, ng sanitize as a dependency for our app level module. And uh, not sanitize, sanitize, I always get that wrong. And now we can go to uh, our authentication service and we can make use of that sanitizer. So let's do that. And you can see that this list of dependencies is starting to grow. Might be an uh, indication that we might need to extract some of these pieces uh, out to you know a smaller thing. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to keep adding uh, dependencies here so that we can make use of it. So once you've added uh, ng sanitize here, uh, you can go down here and then inject it into a controller or a service. And so we're going to inject it, and we're going to create a function called sanitize credentials. Sanitize credentials. And all it's going to do is take those existing credentials uh, and then uh, sanitize them so that we can re return some stuff. So we're going to pull that CSRF token bit up into here, and we're going to say that the email that we want to send along is the sanitized email credentials email. And similarly, the password is going to do the password. And the CSRF token uh, is just CSRF token. And now, uh, instead of doing this stuff down here, we don't need to extend it. Uh, we can just pass it along uh, and call our method. Oops. So let's call sanitize credentials. Oops. Sanitize credentials. Ugh, I spelled it wrong again. It's one of those tricky words. There we go. And we'll pass in our credentials. And the other thing that we need to do is avoid that top level wrapper that we made. Uh, way back up here in single page. Uh, don't want to have this wrapper. Let's just make it a, a value instead of a JavaScript object. And then there's nothing extra wrapping that. So we're basically uh, reducing that one level so that the value of CSRF token is no, no longer an object literal with CSRF token. Uh, we've just basically jammed in a string. Uh, and then in our app, we've added this sanitized credentials that's going to basically take all of that input and uh, sanitize it so that whatever we pass to the server um, is escaped. And so let's take a look at that. Uh, and if we log in, you can see that that still works. Let's log out. And let's add a 
debugger in here so that you can actually see what sanitize does. Uh, example admin. And so if we take a look at credentials, you can see there we've got the stuff in uh, email and password. And if we take a look at sanitize, uh, let's try sanitizing script alert. And you can see that it stripped out those tags. Basically, the way that the sanitized service works uh, is that there's a list of things that are allowed, uh, and it basically takes the input and removes any of the things that aren't allowed from that. And so basically, all that guarantees us is that if the user is typing any of those values into our login form client side, uh, they're going to be stripped out. Now, uh, this still uh, doesn't protect us server side, but luckily, um, you know, I talked about protecting against injections. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of that debugger. Uh, one of the things that um, Laravel does under the hood is it will uh, escape input automatically so that you know, if we wanted to talk about SQL injections, users wouldn't be able to you know, add some SQL in here to say drop table users. You know, that's not actually going to get passed through. My database is still going to be secure. So I can see uh, that if I refresh, I still have a users table. Uh, and the reason is that Laravel under the hood um, in the auth module will escape any of the input that's going to query against the database uh, using prepared statements. So you don't have to worry about uh, SQL injection uh, prevention in this instance. I'm only showing you the sanitized module uh, so that you can understand that Angular provides it as a service to you that you can use uh, to protect your uh, any input that you're sending to the server that you may then redisplay on the screen. So if I, for example, once the user is logged in, I wanted to display that information in the top right here, uh, and then that uh, those script elements would be uh, stripped. So that basically shows uh, you know how you can protect from uh, injection from uh, script injection into arbitrary fields that you're going to send. Uh, if you're using any other modern web framework like Rails. Uh, like Django, uh, and you're using their authentication providing mechanisms, uh, they're more than likely going to cover you. Uh, you should definitely investigate it, though I went and took a look at the Laravel source code just to make sure that it was doing that. And uh, as long as you're using uh, Eloquent uh, as your database uh, adapter, uh, which is Laravel's ORM, which the auth module does under the hood, any of that input is going to be escaped before it goes off to be queried or stored in the database. So you're protected from that regard. So let's recap. We talked about serving your application over HTTPS and serving your uh, static assets, your login form over HTTPS. And if you want to check out that article that I linked by uh, uh, Troy earlier, you can check that out. It's got a six minute video that just kind of breaks down what that vulnerability is and why it's important to serve your uh, login forms over HTTPS, as well as posting to uh, your backend uh, via HTTPS. Uh, and we basically took a look at um, you know, how we can add some filters uh, to our routes. This is Laravel specific, but I know that you can do the same thing in Rails. Uh, you can add filters. We talked about cro preventing cross-site uh, request forgeries using that token. Uh, we injected uh, it a couple of different ways using ng init, and then uh, sort of the more elegant way using constant, so that's injectable as a dependency, and not just something that's stuffed onto the root scope that uh, all the child scopes can inherit from. And then we looked at, uh, you know, pulling that concern of adding the uh, CSRF token out into our authentication service uh, and how that all works. And again, I just want to reiterate, this is not a silver bullet. Um, this level of protection would make me comfortable putting this into production, uh, but probably I would still consult with somebody on my team that has more knowledge about security than me. I'm just wanting to give you enough of an overview that you can, uh, you know, understand the implications involved in using Angular uh, and, and building single page apps with uh, submitting credentials via Ajax and all of the security questions that that stuff implies. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. And if you have uh, any further questions or you have uh, other suggestions on what you'd like to see next, please respond in the comments and I will do my best uh, to do that. I'm definitely listening to what people want to see uh, and security was the, the big topic that that people seem to respond to the second screencast with. Uh, thanks.